Hello readers, it's Sasha and today I am going to be filming my Goodreads Chooses My TBR for February. So for this video, I don't know why I chose to do this but I did. I decided to change the rules a little bit for this game. So if you don't know what Goodreads Chooses My TBR is, essentially I have my want to read list on Goodreads and I throw that number of books that's in that list into a random number generator and the first five books that come up are corresponding to what I'll read in the month of XYZ. And last year I decided to up the ante and I added a wildcard number so if I landed on anything that ended in the random number I chose that month. I'd have to add an extra book. Plus, if I land on anything that's not out yet, I will have to add an extra book. So the first video where I implemented these new rules, shit hit the fan. It was really wild. So here's to hoping that doesn't happen again. But essentially what I'm going to be doing, I'm still going to have the wild card and the, you know, if I land on something that's not out, I have to add an extra book. But I have decided to kind of change the way I pick. So I watch Rise Reading Corner. She does Jane for her TBR and to figure out how many pulls she does she rolls these two die and that corresponds to the amount that she pulls. So I kind of figured it would be fun for me to roll some die and go from there and pull however many it tells me to. So I have a random dice roller as well where I'm just going to roll two six-sided die and kind of go from there and I have decided that the last pick is going to kind of be like my pick but I'll pick like a random page number so right now I have 13 pages on my want to read list so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1 through 13 on the random number generator pick whichever number that comes up with and go to that page and pick a book that works for me or something I really want to read I just think that would be a good way to incorporate some things into this crazy life I have mainly because I am participating in a couple of things this year so one I'm doing my TV be our project which is just five star predictions i'm also going to be participating in the buzzwordathon i just find it fun like a lot of people are doing it i just find it kind of fun and it's a good way to clean out your tbr in a fun way so i wanted to participate in that and i'm also doing the shadow hunters read along so each month those are like three things on my tbr already so that's a lot of things so i figured if i potentially landed on a page where any of those books were i could add it in something like that i don't know if it's actually gonna like work the way i want it to but that's what i'm gonna do so i'm I'm going to start my screen recording. I have everything set up already, so bear with me one sec. So my screen is recording. So we're gonna figure out, I feel like we should do the dice roller first so we kind of know what we're working with. This is brand new to me, so let's just, oh crap, I forgot to do one thing. Please hold. Three hours later. Let's start with the dice roll, see how many picks I have, and then we'll kind of go from there. So that works for me, so. Six. Okay, that's great. That's a really good number to start with. I am very happy with that. <laughs> so that's six books from Goodreads. So the sixth is going to be my special choice. So I think that's great. I'm really happy with that. So let's pick our wild card number. I have everything already set up. So let's see. Zero. So our wild card number is going to be zero. So if I land on anything that ends in that number, I add an extra book. So I really definitely don't need that in my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna hope that that's not the case. That's fine though. I have 1,221 books because I don't have self-control. So we'll start off, we'll just start picking books and hopefully it corresponds to some fun ones. So book number one is going to be 592. So we're gonna go over to page six. Okay, last month was so incredible like with the books I got to choose. So this better do something for me. I'm suing if it doesn't. The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. Okay, this is great. Yes, okay, I'm okay with this. This is good. This is a fantasy it came out in 2021 I think and I've heard really great things about this. So, something is wrong in Snake by Oregon. Teenagers are disappearing, some turning up dead, the weather isn't normal, and all fingers seem to point to TV's most popular ghost hunters who have just returned to town. Logan Ortiz Woodley, daughter of TV's Paraspectors, has never been to Snakebite before, but the moment she and her dads arrive, she starts to get the feeling that there's more secrets buried here than they originally let on. Ashley Barton's boyfriend was the first teen to go missing, and she's felt his presence ever since. But now that the Ortiz Woodleys are in town, his ghost is following her, and the only person 
Ashley can trust is the mysterious Logan. When Ashley and Logan team up to figure out who or what is haunting Snakebite, their investigation reveals truths about the town, their families, and themselves that neither of them are ready for. As the danger intensifies, they realize that their growing feelings for each other could be a light in the darkness. Incredible, impeccable, 10 out of 10. That is going to be great. I already have really high expectations for this. For some reason, I felt like this was a lot more popular, like when I heard about it first coming out, but it doesn't really have a lot of ratings or reviews, so I'm interested. Anything that has like less than 5,000 of either ratings or reviews, it kind of feels like more low-key to me, more underhyped, but I'm definitely excited because the Dead in the Dark sounds incredible and it sounds right up my alley. It does not sound like it has a pronoun in the title, so that does not help with the buzzword thon or my TBR project. So, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm still really excited about it. So let's go on to book number two. Let's keep going. Let, let's just have these good moments. Like I'm, I'm here for this like camaraderie between us. So two, 119. Okay, beautiful. So 119, an earlier addition to this list. I have been adding things left, right, and center to this list over the past, I want to say like month. I have been adding like every book that even like remotely sounds like something I would read it's on. So, oh, The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I own this. This is great. I can handle this fully. So, do I know what it's about? Not really. Don't really pay attention to that. So, Andy had it all planned out. When you're a politician's daughter who's pretty much raised yourself, you learn everything can be planned or spun or both, especially your future. Important internship? Check. Amazing friends? Check. Guys? Check. As long as we're talking no more than three weeks. Someone's a hoe. <laughs> but that was before the scandal, before having to be in the same house with her dad, before walking an insane number of dogs. That was before Clark and those few months that might change her whole life. Because here's the thing, if everything's planned out, you can never find the unexpected. And where's the fun in that? I found this at my thrift store, really excited to pick it up. I don't have like amazingly high hopes or anything. I just think it's going to be a fun contemporary and I'm always in the mood for those. I love young adult contemporary still, even though I'm an adult, I still like feeling like I'm not an adult. So let's go into book number three. This is going well so far. Okay, cool. I thought I jinxed it for a second and I got really upset, but I didn't. So let's go over to page 10 and pick 909. Still really excited. I'm still looking forward to this. So let's see. I also don't remember what I add like literally ever. So this is going to be interesting, I think. The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I've heard like really mixed things about this, to be honest. So let's talk about it. I feel like it let a lot of people down. Like from the people I know who've read it, I think this has let a lot of people down. So in a series of online posts, Parker H., a young psychiatrist, chronicles the harrowing account of his time working at a dreary mental hospital in New England. Through this internet message board, Parker hopes to communicate with the world his effort to cure one bewildering patient. We learn, as Parker did on his first day at the hospital, of the facility's most difficult, profoundly dangerous case, a 40-year-old man who was originally admitted to the hospital at age 6. This patient has no diagnosis. His symptoms seem to evolve over time. Every person who has attempted to treat him has been driven to madness or suicide. Desperate and fearful, the hospital's directors keep him strictly confined and allow minimal contact with staff for their own safety, convinced that releasing him would unleash catastrophe on the outside world. Parker, brilliant and overconfident, takes it upon himself to discover what ails this mystery patient and finally cure him. But from his first encounter with the mystery patient, things spiral out of control and facing a possibility beyond his wildest imaginings, Parker is forced to question everything he thought he knew. So when I added this originally, it gave me like the silent patient vibes just because it kind of has that same thing where you know people oh hello Rachel you love my comment that's so kind 10 out of 10 but yeah I thought it gave me the silent patient vibes which was one of my favorite books of 2021 so I added it obviously it has some polarizing reviews not a lot of people love it but I think that's fine I am not one to necessarily follow the crowd so this might really work for me or it might not but this one I'm I'm a little iffy on it Still excited, but a little iffy. Let's go to the fourth. 153. Okay, okay. Let's go back over. The Evil Queen by Gina Showalter. I see retelling. I'm excited. The Evil Queen, the patient. None of these have pronouns. I'm going to cry. It's fine. It's really like actually not fine, but 
Okay. Far, far away in the realm of Enchantia, creatures of legend still exist. Magic is the norm and fairy tales are real. Except fairy tales aren't based on myths and legends of the past, they're prophecies of the future. Already interesting. That's probably why I added it. Raised in the mortal realm, Everly Moreau has no idea she's a real life fairy tale princess until she manifests an ability to commune with mirrors. Soon a horrifying truth is revealed. She is fated to be Snow White's greatest enemy, the evil queen. That is incredible. Why did I not remember this? With powers beyond her imagination or control, Everly returns to the land of her birth. There she meets Roth Charmaine, the supposed Prince Charming. Their attraction is undeniable, but their relationship is doomed. As the prophecy unfolds, Everly faces one betrayal after another, and giving into her dark side proves more tempting every day. Can she resist, or will she become the queen and villain she was born to be? I'm literally gonna cry. That sounds perfect. Why did I completely forget all about this book? How does one forget all about this book? Like, that sounds so good. Okay, well, I'm feeling great. Let's go to the last pick that Goodreads like chooses everything for me and then we're gonna go to the end. 27. Okay, thank god. I was really concerned for a hot minute that it was gonna be like really like not great. I was gonna have to like pick more and add more. I'm just like nervous about everything I do in this game. Um, 27. The Glass Arrow by Kristen Simmons. Yes, okay. This book literally sounds so good still no pronouns i'm going to cry in a world where females are scarce and are hunted then bought and sold at market for their breeding rights 15 year old aya has learned how to hide with a ragtag bunch of other women and girls she has successfully avoided capture and eked out a nomadic but free existence in the mountains but when aya's luck runs out and she's caught by a group of businessmen on a hunting expedition fighting to survive takes on a whole new meaning I've had this book for years and I've always wanted to pick it up, but I just never got around to it. I really am looking forward to this. Obviously the reviews aren't like amazing. So going into it, I'm a little weary, but I've had it for so long. It'll be really good to get it off my list. And that's really exciting to me. So I can't wait to read that. That's awesome. Okay. So now we're going to just include the other pick that I've chosen. So I'm going to put 13 because that's the number of pages right now that I have, right? I think that's correct. Yes. So I'm going to put 1 through 13. We're going to pick a page and we're going to see which book I pick from there. So page 9. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go to page 9. So I'm looking specifically for a pronoun, specifically for anything on my TBR project, specifically anything in the City of Bones world, particularly City of Ashes. So I guess not anything in the world and or I think I can find some pronouns on this page, but I don't think any of the other ones are. So that's great. <laughs> I'm just waiting for something to like pop out at me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and nothing's really doing that. I'm not getting like pop out vibes. Oh, this is like my Christmas Hannah page. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. We Hunt the Flame, I guess, is a potential. Potentially. I'm, really, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, <laughs> this isn't as good as I thought it would be. Ah, nevermore. Ooh, the therapist, but that's not a pronoun. I'm really looking for a pronoun. Jar of Hearts. Also a good one. Did I buy that? Yes. Dark and Shallow Lies sounds great. I'm not having a good time. Uh, into the Water. Things a bright girl can do. The perfect marriage. The good girl. The other misses. Pretty baby, don't cry. Oh no. <laughs> Nothing's sticking out to me. No. Okay. All right. Let's try this again. I feel like I can definitely find something. This is not going well. Um. Okay. So what like spoke to me? Obviously, Ace of Spades is speaking to me, but that's not not pronouns. I really want to get my buzzword in there. So I'm gonna try again. Three hours later. Okay. Let's go through these. I'm gonna cut out a big chunk of this because I'm gonna be reading synopses and stuff like that. So, The Things We Do For Love. This has a great rating. It looks like something my grandmother would read if she were alive still. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay, this kind of sounds good. So, The Things We Do For Love is definitely like giving me, it's giving me something. So, that is a potential. If you believe it's not really giving me much, it's just giving me a very vague synopsis. I know you did it. Sounds good. Like, it definitely sounds like something I'd be into. Maybe. We were never here. I love this one. This one sounds so good. This very well could be a contender. So, that's great. The night she disappeared. Oh, but this one sounds good too. Ah! Okay, great. People we meet on vacation. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not getting much. I Obviously, I want to read it at some point, but the other ones just make me happier. So, let's see. Don't you cry. I own this one, so that would be nice. This sounds interesting. I really loved Mary Kubica's... Did I really love it? Because I don't remember what the fuck it's called. 
other book that I read. I really liked it. This one isn't giving me as much though. Like I do want to read it, but like I probably wouldn't prioritize this book and I kind of want to be able to prioritize it. So eh, not really giving me much, not gonna lie. Find you first. It sounds good, but like it's not necessarily something I have to read. So we're gonna exit. You were never here. This, my sister-in-law owns this, so I could borrow it potentially. I like the idea of this. There's a paranormal fantasy element. It's definitely a contender. Maybe it's not. Okay. Um, lie to me. Yes. Okay. This goes straight in with the amnesia trope. Yes. Okay. So this sounds really good too. So now I have to choose between two of my favorite authors of 2021. I'm going to say no to I Know You Did It. We Were Never Here sounds really fucking good though. I can't not commit to that one yet. The Night She Disappeared has amazing reviews. Like so good. Okay. I'm struggling. Noah, yeah. can you come here? I'm gonna get Noah to pick my next book. I'm gonna give you four titles. Uh huh. I just need you to pick one for me because I can't decide. Okay? From like right just, here? Yeah. Okay. Just from like based on the title. So, The Things We Do for Love, We Were Never Here, The Night She Disappeared, and Lie to Me. The Night She Disappeared, that is the most potential for intrigue. I'm sorry. It's basically a title. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, The Night She Disappeared. <laughs> by Lisa Jewell. I'll just read the synopsis really quick. So 2017, 19-year-old Tallulah is going out on a date, leaving her baby with her mother, Kim. Kim watches her daughter leave, and as late evening turns into night, which turns into early morning, she waits for her return and waits. The next morning, Kim phones Tallulah's friends, who tell her that Tallulah was last seen heading to a party at a house in the nearby woods called Dark Place. She never returned. 2019, Sophie is walking in the woods near the boarding school where her boyfriend has just started work as a head teacher, and she sees a note fixed to a tree. Dig here. A cold case, an abandoned mansion, family trauma, and dark secrets lie at the heart of Lisa Jewell's remarkable new novel. So... Yeah, the night she disappeared. It has my pronoun that I'm looking for and I'm really excited to read this. I guess I'll stop the recording. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the book that we're reading for the Winers Book Club picks. So this is on Manda's channel over on Ginger Snapped Reads and this is by one of my favorite authors of 2021 as well. It's the start of her new series and it's called Castle in the Bones by Laura Sebastian. This sounds incredible. I'm so excited to pick this up. You have no idea. It's supposed to come out on the 1st of February. I will be buying it. Very excited. So Empress Margot has had plans for her daughter since they were born. Princesses Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice will be queens, and now age 16, they must leave their homeland and marry their princes. Beautiful, smart, and demure, the triplets appear to be the perfect brides because Margot knows there's a one common truth. Everyone underestimates a girl which is a grave mistake. Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice are no innocent. They have been trained since birth in the arts of deception, seduction, and violence with a singular goal, to bring down monarchies, and their marriages are merely the first stage of their mother's grand vision, to one day reign over the entire continent of Asteria. What? The princesses have spent their lives preparing, and now they are ready, each with her own secret skill, and each with a single wish pulled from the stars. Only, the stars have their own plans, and their mother hasn't told them all of hers. So, the winners will be discussing that on Amanda's channel. I'll link her down below as well as our Twitter so you will know kind of when that's coming up but Laura Sebastian knows how to write a really really amazing fantasy so I have nothing but high expectations for this if it doesn't meet it I will be really sad I might never read again then I briefly want to mention that I will be participating in the Shadowhunters read along hosted by Darian, Lisa, and Casey and the second book for that is City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. So this is the second book in the Mortal Instruments series <laughs> and we just started last month so obviously we're only on the second book but picking up the first book I had such an amazing time this month so I cannot wait to read City Bashes and I just bought the brand new covers of them and I am thriving. <laughs> so I cannot wait to pick that up. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about my TBR project. I discussed this as my five star predictions video in December, I think, or January when I did it. But essentially, I'm going to be reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and hopefully the other two books in the series as well this month. I am so excited for this. Literally nobody has any idea how pumped I am for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I love young adult mystery thrillers and this has gotten so much praise. So I have really, really high expectations for it. Obviously, I'm expecting it to be five stars and I'm 
I'm expecting the whole series to kind of follow suit or be like at least 4.5, but I'm expecting all of them to be five stars. So I'm also reading that this month as well. So that is everything for you guys today. I'm going to be attempting to read quite a few books this month, but I'm really excited for them. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. All the books that I picked from the Goodreads, she's my TBR, are pretty exciting. And I'm looking forward to reading more. That is all. Thank you for choosing to watch this video. That's not what I say. Thank you for tuning into this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. I am posting whenever I can. And until next time, bye readers! Mm -hmm.